you today. And today's message is about names. And it's about the name above all names and how we understand the name above all names. And so we're going to begin with the beginning of naming things which we find in the second chapter of the book of Genesis. Now, Genesis has two creation stories. We often don't realize that, but there are two very distinct stories, one in the first chapter of Genesis and one in the second chapter of Genesis. So we're gonna to read today a short excerpt from the second creation story according to Genesis and that'll be Genesis 2. I'm just going to read verses 18 to 20. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that Adam, or mankind, or man, should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what they would call them. Whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle and to all the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. He gave names to them all. So there we got names for everything. Snail and slug and gnat and fire ant and right on down the line. And whatever it is, we got a name for it, right? Okay. So we got names. Now we get a different name idea, and this name idea is found in the book of Exodus, where Moses comes to the burning bush, and this is what this is what uh, Moses tries to get out of his job of going to liberate the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt, and he tries to get out of it by asking God. What is God's name? This is Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am is who I am. He said this, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Now on that idea of the name of God, we have this wonderful passage that comes to us through the words of Jesus from the 17th chapter of John. Now we've been working all spring and summer about the, the I am passages in John's gospel. So I'm gonna to read to you now from John, gospel according to John chapter 17, and I'll start with the sixth verse. These are the words of Jesus. I have manifested your name to the people you gave me out of the world. These that though thy, yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from, is from you, for I have given them the words which you gave to me and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you gave me, for they are yours. 
all mine are yours and yours are mine and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but they are in the world. I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. And while I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me me. And now a reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians where we come to the name above all names. And this is Philippians chapter 2. From Philippians chapter 2 I'm going to read to you verses uh, 5 through 11. You find Philippians in the letters of Paul towards the back part of your New Testament after Romans and 1st and 2nd Corinthians and Ephesians, you come to Philippians chapter 2. And this, these are the words of the Apostle Paul. Think this way, or have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of humanity, being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we're going to start out talking a little bit about names and how important names are. Uh, for those of you visiting, I do show and tell every single Sunday uh, because um, over the years we have collected a collection of collections. <laughs> and we have this vast collection of collections. And today I borrowed a collection from Peter. Because Peter collects passports and travel ephemera of all kinds. So I brought you a stack of passports. Because we all have a name. And our name is who we are. Now, in our scripture today, there's this very amazing passage where Paul says of Jesus that God bestowed upon him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every, every knee would bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, today I want to suggest to you to claim the truth of that passage. It's very difficult, and I'm going to walk you through it, but to claim the truth of that passage. Because what we do usually is we, 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 we think that, see, we're, we, we, it says, every tongue, every <laughs> knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, every, and Paul speaks of those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth, everybody, totally inclusive of all humanity. But what we do is we separate ourselves. And I've been going on this for a while now. We separate ourselves between us and them. And we have this weird idea circulating around today that there's this us against them thing. <laughs> Friends, 
is only us. Okay? It's just us. And we got to we got to work that out. So here's what I brought you today. And I, I want you to see this. Because I want you to think about these people. Because these are passports. And each one of these belonged to a person. And was used. And, and if you could just imagine being with them. This one from Vietnam. This was a Vietnamese person. This one is Chilean. This person was from Chile. Probably when Allende was the president of Chile. Study a little history there. This one opens backwards. It doesn't open the same way because this one is Israeli. Okay. Oh, this one I love. Who can tell me where did this come from? This is the Soviet Union. Can, can you imagine giving this to a border guard in, in, in the days when the Soviet, you know, I, you know that, that's how this is heavy stuff. This one is Iraqi, and it's from Iraq in the old days when Saddam was in power. This is from Pakistan. This one is from Germany. This one is from Kenya. This one is super rare because it's a vintage passport from Cuba. And they didn't issue very many of them because it was hard to get out yes. of Cuba. Uh, this is Greek. This is from Greece. Bosnia Herzegovina. Another one that you can imagine the tension involved. People's Republic of China. Wow. This is Ukraine. Romania, and the last one is from Burundi. Uh, where's Burundi? <laughs> it's in Africa. I used to teach geography back in the day. Now, the, 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 the point of all this is that we have to broaden our minds and broaden our hearts and our ability to accept the truth that is in this scripture. Because most preaching about this passage, where it says, it says that, uh, that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is commonly used to bring a message of supremacy and, and a message that, oh, the solution to all the world's problems is very simple. Very simple solution. They have to become like us. It's easy, right? They will become just like us. Really? Do you think? I don't think so because, see, we are us and they are them but what we have to do is reach our minds and our hearts out a little further from which to which we can understand the commonality that we share all of us together the commonality that god has given us together and, and to understand that, the name of Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew, is salvation. And we all need the same things. We all have the same desires. We all feel the same pain. 
The blood that is within us is the same blood. And we just have to take a little bit of an arm's length from all the things that try to make us want to be us against them. It's just us. And we all are the children of God. We all are forgiven. We all are redeemed. And, and if we can accept that good news, it gives us a, a better attitude to reach into any conflict or any difficulty that we may ever face. It empowers us to show the love of God, the love of God in all interactions that we may have. And, and so what is necessary is for us just to try to broaden that concept that is the concept of Jesus, the concept of Christ, because we profess that Christ is the son of the creator, the one who made it all, the one who gave us the power to name things. And so when we name stuff, we, we would begin separating ourselves according to how we would name stuff. And, and so we would separate ourselves in all kinds of ways. So one group of people is about to say, this thing right here is a fork. And somebody else said, no, it's not, it's a hookah bacha. You know? <laughs> Well, no, it's a fork. No, it's a hookah bacha. Well, let's fight about it. It's pretty much that simple. God calls us to peace, hope, love, unity. All of that is what Christ calls us to. Amen. Amen. And this sacrament, 